me. Is it all sunny at Crystal Palace? And and this is no disrespect to Crystal Palace as a football club, but is it a sign that, that, that there are issues behind the scenes, maybe a power struggle, seeing as they can't seem to formulate a, a, a long-term cohesive plan? There's enough managers out there. You would have just thought, you know, maybe this is a worth a, a project that's taking worth taking on. Or do you think some of the major candidates for this uh, potential Palace job are uh, a little bit reticent to take it because of what's happened to Patrick Vieira, what happened to De Boer, and the fact that... No, uh, no, 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 I don't uh, think so. I mean, Because they haven't appointed a new manager De, yet, and it looks like De Boer was, was a long time ago, um, and a lot of water has travelled under the bridge since then. They're a Premier League football club. They have been one now for 10 years. Mm. Um, they gave Patrick Vieira a fair shake, um, and he did okay. I was surprised he got dismissed, but the more I found out about some of the coaching regime and some of the some of the things that I become aware of in terms of maybe Patrick's failings, I can understand a little bit more of the reason why they made their choices. The, the characterization on the schedule is, is it unimaginative? Well, we can all have vivid imaginations, and then we have to live in the real world. And the this bottom is your line, argument with the producer, Luke, about the real world. Well, it's about the reality of what you think <laughs> is right for your football club and what you think you need to do, and we can compare and contrast what Bournemouth have done and the new owner looking at it from a certain perspective. And some people would question the decision-making process he's made there because Gary O'Neill did a decent job, bin this fellow, put another guy in. And he'll live and die and he'll live and die by that decision. Irrespective of what I may or may not think about Steve Parrish, the body of work that he's done for Crystal Palace over the last 10 years has, on the whole, been in an upward direction. They've had a few downward turns and they've had a few situations where it's been narrow escapes, but they've always made the right decisions at the right time to get themselves out of particular conundrums. Now, of course, if you're going to compare them to what Brighton are doing, and other clubs at this moment in time, because everything is cyclical. And the Brighton are looking like the poster boys for everything forward thinking. They've got a brilliant scouting network. And Brentford. Right, and Brentford too. Um, uh, and, and, and these are moments in time. And we will see if they've got, if, they, if, they, if Brentford stay in the Premier League for 10 years, we will see how that looks. Right now, they look like they're doing things very well. So, so do you think that's a settled manager? The limit of, of Crystal Palace's ambition, actually, is the fact... Because we spoke to a guy from the Back of the Nest podcast uh, yeah. on the Sunday session, who, the Crystal Palace pan, fans podcast, which is part of the TalkSport fan network. And he said that Paris has got like a set of data where he's sort of worked out that only a small percentage of clubs stay in the top flight after promotion for seven, eight years. But those that stay for 11 plus years actually cement themselves as part of the furniture. And actually, the first thing that he wants to do is just make sure this club, no matter what happens, is established in the Premier League. Now, that may sometimes look like 15th. Sometimes it may look like 9th. But until they've got that sort of solid base of a platform, then actually the limit of their ambition has to be, initially, to stay every season in the, in the top How long has Southampton been in the Premier League? About seven years. Yeah. I'm just curious to see how that data starts. I mean, I look, you, data is as good as what you do with it. And you, you, there's an old expression. No, uh, nine years. Chris okay, but they've been up. nearly to that point where we're talking about them being established. So there's a, there's an exception to defy every single rule. Yeah. I don't think Paris should be sitting there suggesting that uh, I'm I'm now nailed on and being in the Premier League by having some data that tells me... No, that I, I think what he's saying is that the criteria of how he chooses management is based on a survival train of thought rather than a Correct. progression. I don't see that because surely they're... They, they're, they're they don't have to be. They can be together in his thinking, where you go, we're gonna we're gonna survive by appointing this manager because he's gonna progress us and we're gonna get better. I don't see how you'd make two separate decisions where you go, well, actually we've got to stay in the league, so I'm gonna choose this okay, guy. So, so by giving rather than Roy Hodgson the job, is it progressive? Is that gonna move them on? Well, the only thing that progresses football clubs is money, and then good coaches. So with that in mind, they go hand in glove. That's what I'm talking and about. And so what you've got is a situation where you're considering... I, I think you're attributing far more to a decision-breaking process than the reality of it really is. What do you think it is, then? Well, I think you pick a manager based upon what you've got. And if you're not going to spend £100 million pounds and your budget is 30 £40 million quid, yeah. A, you're going to get a certain type of manager available to you anyway. B, by the very nature of the club's ability to be able to achieve, you're only going to get a certain amount of money available to you anyway. Unless you're going to try and break the doors down of the top 10 and top 6, and we now know that goalpost has moved significantly, because you're going to get sides inside the top 10 well, that are prepared to spend Brenton 100 million. Aren't spending that well, hold on, hold on. Can we just go back to the original point? Palace, Palace were ninth under Alan Pardew six or seven years ago. Everything can go around in circles, but it doesn't mean that that's going to be the continuing trend. But it is, it, Were you saying that Parish or somebody else said about this data? Because that, that analysis of whether you stay in once a certain amount of years or not how does there's no relevance to it because it wouldn't change your thinking well it, no but it might give you a solid base of uh, finances i suppose what it means is and it is no, somebody no, it else's doesn't. data it doesn't give you anything you know what your finances are you're in the premier league you know what your gate receipts are 
you know what you're well, 10 years in the Premier League gives you more finances than five years in the Premier League, doesn't it? Mm, well, depends how yeah, many losses you've accumulated. Depends in. what your wage bill is. Well, if Depen you've managed your club in a sensible way, you have well, the do ability you know the to... Do you know the financials of Crystal Palace over the last 10 years? Well, well, well why don't you say... You said about it's all down to money. They're all existing within a framework of just coming underneath the financial they fair play. It, they, have, they have enough in terms of um, backing, in terms of the guy who owns them or has a share in them, in terms of wealth but Crystal to be Palace, able to... Crystal Palace is not running on the basis of, a, of an owner being prepared to spend in order amounts of money to prop up the necessity of the football club being successful. What they're trying to do is operate within a certain means. That's why you don't see Crystal Palace spending 70, 80 million pounds on transfer fees. That's why you don't see Crystal Palace's wage bill going much beyond 70, 80 percent of its turnover because again, they have a certain model. you don't have model. to spend that money in order to be successful in the Premier League, what, because you? you're Because you're picking one set of clubs that have done it currently, That's as an example. Set. There's loads of clubs that scout very, very well that don't spend as much money well, as 70 million, 80 well, okay, million well, you're on both, one You're both, both deviating from the point, because whether well, then, whether you, whether you scout well or not, it we're talking about this. This conversation started about the the, the train of thought that this data creates a different mindset on who you employ. The, the so actual, whether you the, employ the Roy, conversation started whether or not it was unimaginative yeah, so, or not for Crystal Palace yeah. to settle with a year of Roy Hodgson. But my point is whether whether you appoint Roy or whether you appoint somebody else, the end game's the same. Which is what to do a bit better than last season and stay in the Premier League. That's it. For Palace, I'm sorry to say. We want to get a bit better. We don't want a relegation fight. And whichever one we do, so it's not the data of how long they stay so, in. So it is about staying in the Premier League? Well, Always. Well, of course but, it is. But what I mean is whether whether they appoint Roy, not what, you're, what we're talking about is the unimaginative aspect of Roy rather than a big risk. So is that safer or, or are they going to go riskier is the question, not unimaginative. Because Roy is a safe bet on staying in the league. But if you appoint another manager, that should be a safe bet. You, it's not two trains of thinking, is it? As a as a football club, it can't be. You could you could look at it on paper and say it's more of a risk because he hasn't done what Roy's done. But they shouldn't be doing that. They should they should be put some, putting someone in charge. They have complete faith is going to keep them in the league. Right. The so, objective's the same. So what you're saying is that they haven't found anyone that they've got complete faith in apart Correct. from Roy Hodgson. Yeah, but I think they must be looking because if they if they weren't looking, Roy would have signed by now. I think they're trying to find the right fit to to bring someone in because they're only going to have this problem next season because Roy can't go on forever. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? The fact is, is that it's not there's not going to be a long term appointment. And I wonder what Palace fans feel about it because there's other issues too. Wilfred Zaha's future is not sorted out. They've just re-signed both the right backs who are out of contract, Joel Ward and, and Nathaniel Klein. Their biggest problems keeping hold of Eze is a superstar, and 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 Gahey. Yeah, he's a terrific. Well, the player. rumor is that he's going. He's going to leave. He's going to be subject to bids this summer, and they're they're looking at other. Because whoever you bring, Roy's not a magician, and and well, Nor with uh, the Norwich centre back Andrew Omer Bemi Delay. Well, whoever they link with, they'd have to do some damn good recruitment again to re to to get a better player than him. He's a terrific player, and as a people are looking at him. But the fr I don't like the framing of the question because it's divisive. Because their bottom line is, is nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Crystal Palace's uh, desire to be first and foremost a Premier League side. No, no, I agree. And the question is, is leading towards a situation which people should be dissatisfied by that. Yes, of course you want to see ambition, but ambition to some extent is being in the Premier League yes. and then pushing up it. If we frame questions in a way that you're, you're creating division in the argument, there's nothing unimaginative about Roy Hodgson if the alternatives out there aren't particularly better or aren't going to deliver you a primary outcome. So what you would want to do in an ideal world is have Roy Hodgson, if that's what you've decided to do, and it's your primary focus is being achieved, which is to... The only objection I'd have to Roy Hodgson being in the door is I don't like his brand of football. And the recent brand of football that I've seen from it's him has been far yeah. better. And if that, if that brand of football that he played at the back end of this season was continued next year, who in God's name would give a monkeys about whether Roy Hodgson was in situ? What, because of the fashionable vogue in certain sections of the media, you've got to go and get a creative it's imaginative manager. It's not about certain sections of the media, is it? It's about what Crystal Palace fans were sold. No, no, it's, no, want, no want. Crystal Palace fans haven't been sold anything. Well, I remember Crystal, little, Crystal Palace fans have been, where, have, been, have been given an opportunity Steve to... Was saying he wants to change the, the way that they, they play their football. And fine. after five, six games with Frank De Boer, they was, threw it out the window. And that was because of the cultural relationship between a manager that couldn't communicate with the players. And what about Patrick Vieira? They wanted a yeah. new young manager had, who was dynamic. And he got above the average for he got above the average for a football manager. He got 20 months. You weren't happy about it when they sacked him. I, I was ambivalent, quite frankly. But you, I, thought was, it was a, you thought it was a. No, you can't tell me what I thought. I can tell you what no, I but thought. But you right? said at the time I was ambivalent about decision. it, but I was also surprised 
that there was a that, that, and then I looked into it more, more deeply to understand why this was the case and I can understand why they made the decision. It was the right decision in the end. Yeah, absolutely it was the right decision. Now, to create a scenario where you're debating whether it's unimaginative because it gets a click or a reaction from people or creates division, I don't think it's constructive. Well, to be fair to Sam, I don't think he's written that. Book. No, 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 I'm not suggesting he is. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, he's the, but he's the person that's levying the question. <laughs> Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.